Everybody pop on in this room. All right. All right. Hold on. Let me get my sound down. Thing. Let me get my audio down for a minute, guys. What's going on, man? Y'all good? Is everybody good? Everybody come on in the room. And we are chopping it up early today on this lovely Friday. What's going on, everybody? Pop on in the room. What's up, Nikki? I see you, dear. See some of the regulars in here. What's up, Brother Wayne? I see you. Got to chop up some game about this Manosphere thing. Before I do that, I got to give people some updates about the microphone check um, screening that's going on in July. Um, we're going to start the screenings. There's going to be more screenings um, starting July 19th. Ladies and gentlemen, microphone check is going to be back in theaters July 19th. Now, in L.A., it's going to be a little earlier. It's going to be um, July 12th. It's going to start the week of July 12th, early in L.A. But the other cities, it's going to start the week of July 19th. So everybody has to hit these cities and see the film. If you've seen it, go see it again. If you have not seen it, definitely go out and see it. The cities it's going to be in, it's going to be in New York. It, it, in fact, in New York, it might be out there for two weeks because, you know, we got a big audience in New York. It's going to be at the Century Center in Chicago, the Midtown Arts Theater in Atlanta, um, the Glendale 12 in Indiana, um, the Ritz 5 in Philly, the E Street Theater in Washington, D.C., um, they're going to give me the theater in Oakland. It's going to be in Oakland. I think they're going to get it in Minneapolis. Where are my Minneapolis people? So my distributor, they're working on Minneapolis. So we're going to have the exact show. So we'll have the exact show times by moment. I keep you guys posted on that. But um, when it comes back in the theaters, it's very important that everybody goes and sees microphone check because um, we are trying to get this thing qualified for an Oscar nomination. So we're really, really going to turn that up and I'm going to go back and do some more press runs in the next week promoting microphone check ladies and gentlemen i right, hope you guys are having a good day today by the way hope everybody's having a good day i, I want to talk about this manosphere thing you know andrew tate he's trending right now and for the last couple of days he's really been hopping on twitter just really using the n-word with the hard er he denigrated juneteenth saying this is a ratchet n-word holiday and so he's really signal boosting messages to the alt right and the 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 white supremacist and people are really looking at him side eyed. Fifty Cent tweeted something about him today, like, "Hey, who is this white boy?" And everybody jumped in. Well, he's not white. His dad is black, and whoop de whoop. And that's the thing that we have to really look at when it comes to some of these manosphere guys. A lot of these Manosphere dudes, um, Andrew Tate, he's a part of that Manosphere. Um, Myron Gaines, he's a part of that Manosphere. And Myron is still salty. Myron is still trying to get me to um, do another debate with him. So basically what they want to do, they want to do troll spaces. They want to do some troll ass nonsense. And um, I, I didn't told them what the terms are. They're going to have to break bread. Y'all going to have to break bread. I'm not about to be a part of your troll spaces. Um, if y'all want me to come on down, y'all break that bread so that we can start trolling and snapping and doing everything. You know, I can troll with you, but it's going to cost. That one's going to cost a little cheddar. But these Manosphere dudes, we got to understand what that's really about. The Manosphere is really a myth. It's not about men going their own way or men's rights. The Manosphere, basically, that's like, um, that's a club of incels who basically morphed out of the PUA movement, which 
basically the PUA movement morphed out of my book, The Art of Mackin'. As everybody knows, and this was very well documented early on, those PUAs, those pickup artist dudes, they got most of their stuff from my book that I wrote in 1999, and it came out in 2000. I wrote a book called The Art of Mac, and many of you, if you've been around, um, you guys have read The Art of Mac, and it was a huge bestseller back then, and it's still a bestseller now, to be honest. I still make a lot of money off that book. Um, classic book. That's the thing that really kicked off the PUA movement, the pickup artist movement, because the white boys, they started getting that book, and they wanted to get some of the information and then kind of switch it up so it would be more palatable to the white audience. And so you had a guy named Neil Strauss and Neil, and there's pictures of me and Neil from back in the day. Um, Neil's book, he came out with a book called, I think it was The Pickup Artist. His book came out in 2005, five years after mine. We, we had the same literary agent. It was a guy named Mark Gerald who was representing me. He then started representing Neil Strauss. So there's a, I'm telling you, there's direct connections with my stuff and those pickup artist dudes. And when I started doing a bunch of stuff on VH1, um, they kept trying to offer me these little janky deals. I'm like, nigga, I made more money in the streets than the shit you offering me. So they just got some white boys to put on little costumes and do this, these little gimmicky pickup artist type of things. So that whole pickup artist thing was basically a bastardization of my stuff. And I mean, these guys were, and they were kind of plagiarizing my stuff. Roosh V, that's another one of those pickup artist Manosphere guys. Um, this dude had a book where he was plagiarizing so much of my shit. I'm like, nigga, you might as well, you should have put my name on the cover. You understand? So around right after 2005, when a lot of these white pickup artists started popping up, I said, I'm going to take the game to another level. I'm going to do something called a podcast. Just talking straight game. And at the time, podcasts were very new. Around 2005, 2006, podcasts were very new. Then I started doing something called the Mac Lessons Radio. We're the Mac Lessons Radio fans out here. You understand? Y'all know what it is. Y'all always hear people talking about Mac Lessons. So I said, I'm, I'm going to double down on the game as it's supposed to be. All these white boys are coming around with this pickup artist stuff and they're mixing some goofy. They were talking about hypnotics. You got to hypnotize bitches. And I'm, what the hell? I said, no, 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 no. I, I got to get some clarity to what the game is about and what it's supposed to be. And I started doing Mac Lessons Radio. That became an instant classic. Nobody was talking about game for men back then in 2006. Y'all know how thorough Mac Lessons was. So that that created a whole new genre. I'm not trying to pat myself on the back. I'm just telling you history here. So a lot of these guys, these guys who would end up being the Manosphere guys, these were guys who couldn't really soak the game up like they could because the game has to be in you, it has to be on you. And a lot of these guys had a lot of insecurity, so they would get little bits and pieces of the game and then try to use that in order to intensify some of their little white supremacist views. So that little manosphere thing started popping off where they would just get little bits and pieces and instead of soaking the game up and letting the game get in them, they would try to weaponize some of the information so they could use it basically against women. It, they, they would take things and try to use their game goofy mindset to kind of dominate women. So they, they took the game somewhere else. You, you know what I'm saying? So a lot of these Manosphere dudes, these are dudes who kind of don't like women. They got a, a chip on their shoulder about women. That's why their whole vibe is aggressive and angry. And you know, look at the Myrans and those guys. When they get women around, what do they do? They argue with women, curse them out, try to fight them. That ain't got nothing to do with what the game is about, man. 
all of that goofy ass stuff ain't got nothing to do with what the game is about. It's they done took some parts of the game and flipped it and made it real perverse. And we're going to the Andrew Tate guy. Now look at this guy, Andrew Tate. This is guy. He's a one of these manosphere guys. And look at the charges this guy got. This guy got all types of weird charges all around the world. You, you know what I'm saying? This ain't got nothing to do with what the game is about. It ain't got nothing to do with what the game is about. It's some real weird energy, perverted nonsense. And a lot of these dudes um, who are real popular in that manosphere, these are these almost white dudes. And a lot of them tried to get down with the alt-right, but they were somewhat rejected. Um, what's this guy, Mark? What's that, Cernovich? That, what's that Cernovich guy? I think he was a part of that whole pickup artist thing, and he became one of these alt-right types. A lot of these white boys became a part of the alt-right. I know Roosh V, he tried to get clicked in with the alt-right. You know, he was one of these pickup artist dudes who stole so much of my stuff, but he got rejected because he's like Middle Eastern or something like that. So they wouldn't really let him in. You understand? Look at Myron. Myron's the little old musty suit niece dude who he identifies as white, but he's not, they don't let him all the way in. They just let him be a mascot. So this is why they always try to double down on this anti-blackness. Look at Andrew Tate. Andrew Tate, he's one of these guys who is almost white. Because when you look at him, you kind of think he might be white. You understand? He was almost white, but those black genes, that black dad, a black granddad, stopped him from being white. So now the anger and vitriol is towards the black community. Like, damn you guys. I could have been white if it weren't for you guys and your black jeans messing it up for me. That's why it's always he's hopping online, yelling the N-word and talking crazy. You got to watch these guys and see where this stuff is coming from. This is why I love the delineation movement, because some of these people who have a little melanin, we think that we're supposed to embrace them because they got a little melanin. No, we got to see what people's backgrounds are. We got to see what their mindsets are. You understand? We got to stop falling for the banana in the tailpipe. Everybody who is not Anglo, that don't automatically mean they're on our team. Everybody who's not Anglo, that doesn't mean that they're automatically on our team. Did y'all see the clip I posted earlier of the, the Mexican dudes? Complaining about Kendrick Lamar's concert. Did y'all see that? Family bought the nerve. It's some Mexican podcasters. Somebody said that they clicked in with No Jumper. I don't know. They might be. I don't know. I don't know. There's so many people over at No Jumper. I don't know. So these guys are doing a podcast and they were talking about the Kendrick Lamar concert. And they were like, yeah, man, I don't know. I, they didn't have no Mexicans up there on stage representing. And I think they did have a, some Mexican, oh, Jeezy, he performed, but he wasn't on stage where everybody was taking that group photo and showing unity. So they were complaining that the Juneteenth concert, because that's what it was. It was, a, it was the Kendrick Lamar show. Lamar show was a Juneteenth celebration. That was a Juneteenth celebration. It happened on Juneteenth. It was, it's about black unity. So they were complaining. How come no Mexican was up there? with the brothers representing LA and whoop de whoop And one of the other guys on the podcast, he was like, well, you know, it was Juneteenth. And they were talking about Juneteenth and these dudes didn't even know what Juneteenth was about. One of the guys was like, yeah, isn't Juneteenth about the Tulsa race massacre? Or is it about Selma? So you're upset that you're not invited to a Juneteenth celebration and you don't even know what Juneteenth is about. You're talking about Tulsa? And then the guy, the, the, the Mexican guy was like, yeah, man, it's about um, oppression. Mexicans, we, we've been oppressed on this land too. We, we've been oppressed. Man, folks will try to tether on to our stuff. And family, this is what I've been telling people. 
the reason why we did microphone check and it was important for us to talk about what was going on on the East Coast in the 70s. We got to nip that in the bud because that I'm telling you, the next narrative that they're trying to move to, they're trying to move that Latinos are 50-50 in hip hop. They're trying to do it out here, too. They're trying to make it seem like Latinos should get equal recognition in West Coast hip hop. I'm telling you, that's where it's trying to go. They've been trying to low-key crowbar that narrative in the mix. They've been testing the waters with it. I'm telling you, that's where they're trying to go. That's why I said we're going to have to do a microphone check West Coast version too. Because that's the next talking point that they're trying to crowbar if we sit there and let people. Folks will sit here and erase the hell out of you if you let them. We have to say enough is enough. But Again, shout out to to Kendrick and those guys. And, and, and truth be told, behind the scene, now, now for the public, everybody's on code as they should about the Kendrick concert and the, the unity and the optics of it. Everybody's on code about that. But even behind the scenes, I've been hearing some rumbling out here in L.A. There's some people who's, who kind of feel a certain way about how that went down because they were thinking, OK, how's that about unity? And there was mostly Pyrus up there. Because a lot of folks don't know the gang politics out here. Kendrick, when they were doing that, um, the concert, most of the guys on stage, like 70 Pyrus, they had about four Crips up there. So most of those cats were Pyrus. So a lot of people out here on the on the streets are kind of, you know, even though they they cool with what happened, some people are, there's some grumblings here and there. But it, it's not going to elevate too much where it's going to be a thing publicly. But I'm just saying behind the scenes, people are, kind of like, oh, is it unity, unity? You know, it's that type of thing. But you keep it behind the scenes. That's not something that should be brought to the forefront because the messaging and the optics were where they were supposed to be. You see. We're going to get some calls in the middle. We got Great Black Shark in the building. Great Black Shark, hop on, brother. Man, can you hear me? I can hear you. What's going on with you, fam? Man, I won't take too long, but I'm so glad that you addressed this particular subject here about this Manosphere meal. And I want to I want to go ahead and bring this to your attention. You probably already know it, but just in case you don't, where we have to, when I say we, the black grassroots over here in New Black Media, where we have to worry about that Manosphere thing is there's a white Manosphere and there's a black Manosphere. Yes. And the black Manosphere is an offshoot of the white Manosphere. I, 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 you know, I won't mention people's names or what have you, but I, I'll definitely hit you up after this space and fill you in on some stuff. But the bottom line is this, with that black manosphere space, we have to worry about a lot of bleed over into our spaces because a lot of these dudes, they hate the hell out of black women. A lot of these little offshoots like SYSBM, Save Yourself, Black Man, like, dude, it, it's a bunch of different sectors to the black manosphere that a lot of people don't know anything about. And they try to hide that when they come over into your spaces because like, you know, they, they like, like when you talk about things like Mac Liz and just that the third, but low key, what a lot of them will do, they'll be like, man, Tariq would be cool if he just didn't speak about the pro black stuff or that black first stuff. They're nowhere to be found when we try to handle black grassroots issues because right. they have this crap called black male first and over here is black man. I have a bad connection. I'll, I'll drop down. So, so the deal is, it's like a lot of them will try to like kind of blend in because believe it or not, brother, some of them have been over here. They talk like they cool and everything, but notice they'll never show up when we're talking about trying to get things done for the community. And mm -hmm. like Aaron in particular, he would be more considered over there into that like white manosphere space. But like, I'm, I'm glad you brought that up because like that, that's really something. I'm just going to say this and get ready to uh, land my plane here. A lot of those clouds are very dangerous. I'm about to send you some information on some stuff that you might not be aware of, but like, yeah, we we gonna have to really tighten up on that over here in these spaces because over here together we got sense enough to know with these white supremacists coming against us, all these other white adjacent groups they're united with their women, and we can't win this fight without our women. So with that said, my brother, I'm playing. My man, thank you so much, Great Black Shark in the building. Let's get um, Marquette Devon. Marquette? Brother Marquette? 
if I'm pronouncing your name right, sir. Marquette, turn your microphone on, sir. Greg, how are you? I'm good, man. What's going on? I'm well. I just want to drop in real quick. I'm currently in talks with Myron about a 1v1 debate. My friend told me that you needed some cash. He's a huge fan of yours. I like your stuff as well. Mm -hmm. I talked to Myron. Um, I wanted to put up the cash and make this happen. He wants to do the business in a different way, but I want to let you know that it's in the works. And if you'd be kind enough to DM me and say, hey, Marquette, I need this amount. I want to put that deal together. Hey, man, that'd be great. That would be absolutely great. Let me, hold on, I'm going to follow you if I'm not following you. I'm going to follow, I'm following you now. And then uh, we'll see what's popping. I'll send you a DM and let's see what we can do. I sent you a DM on IG. I don't really mess around on Twitter too much. I'm pretty much on here just to talk to you right now. But I want yeah. to put this deal together. I think it'll be a great conversation. Um, and, and we'll make it work. We'll figure it out. And thanks for the time. No doubt. Yes, indeed. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so Myron and those guys, yeah, I'm, not, I'm not about to spank these niggas for free. Yeah, I already gave them one free spanking. Yeah, everything else is going to cost. They're going to have to break bread. They ain't going to have to break bread. Um, empower, empowered black gal. Empowered black gal. What's up, sis? Oh, well, yeah, sis. Hey, hey. Are you able to hear me? I can hear you. How are you, beloved? I can't hear anybody. Mm -hmm. Uh oh, I can hear you. Uh oh, I can't hear you now, dear. All right. I will get you back up, sis. I'll get you back up in a second. I can't hear you now. Superstar. Let's get Superstar in the building. Superstar, unmute your microphone. Yo, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. What's up, brother? What's up, man? Uh, I just wanted to tap in. Uh, shout out to you for the microphone check, Doc. And shout out to the West Coast, because... I've been seeing this narrative that, you know, every time some hip hop discussion comes up, you got some corny nigga always trying to make it an East Coast, West Coast thing. Right. I'm from Queens, New York. Everybody over here fucking with Kendrick, man. I, I don't even know how to do that little dance that y'all be doing over there, but I be trying. So mm, mm. to everybody out there trying to put that divide between East versus West, stop that shit, man. We rocking with the West Coast. And also for the Manosphere niggas, I feel like they be having some valid points, but then it gets just trailed off into just like bitter hurt nigga shit where it's like oh she didn't say hi to me i gave her a chocolate reese's pieces in second grade and she broke my heart right you know so they lose me after a while but i'll be trying to listen but then they lose me so just Real be time. careful with that if the dudes is tuned in man thank you so much yeah man a lot of the yeah it gets into like insecure bitter stuff that these dudes be projecting because see again a lot of these dudes man especially some of the um the non-fba cats some of these dudes come from these little racial backgrounds where they're they're not quite white. They're almost white, but not quite. There's like a racial identity that they're struggling with. You understand? And they try to distance themselves from black people so that they can try to get in good with the white supremacists, but the white supremacists won't fully accept them. So it's a tragic tether type of thing going on with a lot of these dudes. It's a tragic tether vibe. And I don't have no sympathy for them because, um, you know, they, they spend most of their time trying to denigrate us. And I have zero respect for that. Battle. What's up, Battle? Hey there, Tariq. How you doing? I'm good, Battle. Good, good, good. Um, I... Um emailed you, uh, I guess, I, I don't know if I had the right email, um, some suggestions. Uh, I do live televised um, and event productions. Okay. Uh, and um, I want to help enhance what you're doing. Mm -hmm. um, so I- what city, what city are you in, brother? I'm here in Los Angeles. Oh, cool. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was going to um, come by the museum and sit, you know, have a sit down, wanted to sit down and, you know, chat with you. Uh, more in detail, but I kind of sent a synopsis of what I want to um, present to you as far as enhancing the uh, reparations rally movement or any other events that you have that you need help with um, as far as live events. Okay. Do you have um, a reel? Do you have a reel of some of your stuff? No, I do not. Um, That's going to be the first thing, brother. You got to have a reel of some of your stuff so we can see what your, your production looks like. Well, well, because I've worked with 
um, and you probably are familiar with Jesse Collins and cassette productions and stuff like that. Like I've done uh, Grammy Awards and uh, BET Awards, stuff like that okay. um, as a production okay. manager oh, um, cool. and logistics person. So okay. I have my production binders of all the productions that I've done, music cares, all those kinds of things. So I do a lot of the logistics for that. Got it. Okay. Well, yeah, yeah. I'll check the email and we'll chop it up that way. All right, Mars. What's up, Mars? Hey, Tariq. How uh, you doing, Mars? I'm doing well. Thanks, man. I hope you're doing well. Um, yes, I am. I had the pleasure, the absolute pleasure of listening to that that debate, uh, so-called debate. It was more like a more like a male role model spanking that you gave them, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> it was it was so funny. Ten yeah. on ten on one, and they couldn't they couldn't touch you. But oh, yeah. also, uh, so yeah. I just I just first want to thank you for the, the yes, entertainment sir. value, but also you educated a lot of people that day. I don't know if they they realize it yet, but um, yeah, you had people claiming that they were that they were black, and 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 telling you on stage in front of, I guess thousands of people, that black people were stupid. Mm -hmm. Like it was one of the most embarrassing things I've ever heard come out of their mouths, and they are white supremacists. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, they're wannabes, but you know they're 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 useful idiots. And uh, one of the other things I noticed is, out of a two-hour spanking, mm -hmm. uh, about twenty-five. It only took them twenty-five minutes, so they give you one eighth of time to talk about your subject, and then they had to go right into their strategy of um, trying to get you to side with them against the Jews. And mm -hmm. that was their that was their big strategy was. Well, if we could just get the FBAs to hate the Jews too, then we can hoodwink them and we can finesse them into, we can use them in our movement to hate everybody. It's not, they, they don't just hate Jews, obviously. They hate everybody who's not exactly like them, has their exact same religion, their skin tone, even though they've got these token other people of different races that follow them around. Mm -hmm. and. And it was just really fascinating as a psychological experiment to see what they had going on. And I think you 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 handled them quite well. And I, I want you to know that that's what I heard. I heard yeah. a bunch of people that wanted to convince you to give up uh, your struggle and, and your mission in life so that you would follow them into their little battle against some other group of people there's 15 million jews in this world and that's their big bugaboo you know mm -hmm. oh yeah and let me let me touch on that because yeah and, and notice i didn't fall for that family and you watch that when the white supremacists and the white supremacists adjacents try to get you to get into the well it's really jewish supremacy family you never fall for that that trick bag that's a major trick bag that's a trick. And then they'll try to do the peer pressure. You scared to say something about the Jew. Uh, the Jews got you scared. Do are you on the Jewish payroll? Eh, that, that ain't gonna work either. That cornball peer pressure don't work. We play past that. Because what we don't do, you stay codified, you don't get into just racial or ethnic bigotry just for the sake of bigotry. You don't do that. I don't do that. I'm not criticizing people for being an ethnic religion. I'm not doing that. You don't do that. I don't criticize people for being white. Notice when I talk about people, I talk about white supremacist. You see, I don't, you never hear me say, man, white people ain't shit. I don't do that. I talk about white supremacists. They're a problem. That's not based on your race. That's based on your actions. I don't attack Africans. That's another lie. When people say, you be going in on Africans. No, I don't. I go in on tethers. There's a difference between our African and Caribbean brothers and sisters and tethers. Tethers, that's based on an action. That's based on something you're doing where you're trying to undermine us. You're trying to have some kind of vitriol towards us. You're trying to um, negatively cosplay as us. That's what I'm critical of. You see? I don't do that. I don't I don't engage in bigotry. I call out an action. So when they try to say, well, go in on the Jews, no, I'm not gonna 
go in on Jewish people because they're Jewish. Because you have Jewish people who are black. You have Jewish people who are white who are not racist. You have Jewish people who are white who don't have any power. Or who are not racist. But the Jewish people who practice white supremacy, I'm just putting you under the banner of white supremacy. I don't separate white supremacists. If there's a Jewish person who's anti-black, you go into the white supremacist category. I'm not breaking you up in little groups because you operate as a team with the Anglo white supremacists. All the white supremacists are equal. Don't let these people trick bag you. I don't break the oppressor class up. I do not break them up. You're all under the same guise. You understand? Brother Rob J, what's up? Rob? Rob J, where you at? All right, Rob. All right, Rob. I had you in here and you got quiet. I don't know what happened, Rob. Mimi, what's up with Mimi? How are you? How are you, Miss Mimi? I'm great. How are you? I've been good. We haven't heard from you in a while. Okay, well, I just see you still trying to be a nigga. Why don't you want to be a Negro? And still, here's my question for you. Me, me, you me, me, hold on, me, hold on, me, hold on, hold on. Me, me, slow down. Mimi, they haven't given you your medication, Mimi. You haven't gotten your medication yet, Mimi. Who, who, who's your caretaker, Mimi? How come they don't give you your medication, sweetie? Go ahead, Mimi. Mimi, she seems like a sweet soul. No, I'm she... fully funded. What's the difference between Malcolm X and Martin Luther King? Well, okay. Is Mimi... it Martin Luther King election interference? Hold on, Mimi, she seems like a sweet soul. She's just crazy as cat shit. So y'all please excuse her. I tried to be inclusive to have everybody up to kind of speak, but you know, sometimes Mimi, you know, the the bulb is in the lamp. Okay, was on poppy seeds. The, when you... the bulb is in the lamp, but the light ain't on. Go ahead, go ahead, Mimi. What what do you have to say, dear? Go ahead, Mimi. Mimi's talking about poppy okay, seeds. No, 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 no. Because you you was... go ahead, okay. dear. Here I am. Go ahead. Okay, so um, Martin Luther King, he kind of favors election interference because Martin Luther King is born resigns in Georgia, right? So why the fuck he over there in Gas, Alabama? Why he on the... Like, oh, Lord. He, okay. Well, okay. okay. Um, whoever Mimi's caretaker is, please give her her correct dosage of medicine. Y'all don't let this woman run around all willy-nilly, just, you know. I, I blame the caretakers. Okay. Let me get some more people in here. Bless her heart. Bless her heart. We got to be patient with some people. We got to be patient. I'm not going to beat up on her. Bless her heart. She means well. She just don't, she don't know no better. Um, let me see who else we got. Um, let's get, um, let's get Will. Let's get Will Pujols. Will Pujols. I think that's your name, sir, right? Eh? Will. Hey, how you doing, brother? I'm good. Will, how are you, sir? I'm good. I'm good. I, I just uh, learned about you the other day when when you were taking off, taking on those white supremacist uh, mm -hmm. sympathizers. I want to call them because they'll never be white supremacists because they'll never be white, although mm -hmm. they want to be white. Right. Yes. And I I loved how you handled the situation, brother. That's that's what I wanted to come up and talk about. I'm very concerned with the atmosphere right now, especially on this platform, there's a lot of white supremacists who feel that, you know, they can say whatever they want because, you know, they're not in real life, right? They're, they're on this platform behind these emojis and these fake profiles and they'll say whatever they want. But we know that in the end, in real life, they're not going to say any of this stuff. So yeah. you're doing a great job. Uh, my, my whole concern and the reason why I even went into that space when you were debating uh, Myron Gaines and these other other clowns, I call them clowns at this point, is these men are teaching kids how to disrespect women and how to go about their life in, in, in a completely wrong way. Yeah. And it's something that I've been calling them out for. 
And right around that time, you came in and, and just manhandled these guys. And I like the way that you did it. I, I like what you represent because I understand, you know, coming to America, I understood that there is a black struggle here that mm -hmm. no one but you will be able to understand. And last year, I, I, I learned about this some more. And, you know, people have tried to get me to go against what you represent. But I think that what you represent is truth, is, is yeah. truth from the eyes of a black American from America, not not from somewhere else, from America. And, you know, I learned about the word tether and mm. someone tried to tell me, well, you shouldn't you shouldn't like this guy because he, he calls people like you tethers. I'm, I'm from the Dominican Republic. Right. Right. And I completely agree with the word tether because I mm. see even my own people and people from, you know, other countries that want to come in and side with white supremacists just because they fear that they're going to be targeted in, in the white supremacist racism. Right. And, and I will never fall for that. I am someone who I embrace the, the black community here in America. And I understood that these are the men that have fought for my liberties, my rights. Right. I, I was uh, drafted um, at the age of 17 to play baseball. And if it wasn't for Jackie Robinson and if it wasn't for the brothers that put up a fight against white supremacy, supremacism during their time, I wouldn't even be able to play the game, right? Mm. So I've understood this from the beginning. And again, brother, I, I want you to know that there are people out there that are not from your community that completely agree with you and understand the struggle in the fight against white supremacism. All of yes. these America first, you know, groipers and all of these other people, they're all white supremacists. Mm -hmm. And people need to understand that. And just yes. because someone from outside of America wants to come in and act and cosplay like they're black Americans and say, oh, we don't face racism. We don't we you guys shouldn't even be listening to those people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so Tariq, I just want to let you know, brother, that you got an ally here. Um, I, again, you know, I'm from the Dominican Republic, but I live here in America. I love America and I love what your community has done for America and what you continue to do for America and, and particularly yourself, because now. I've looked into you, brother, and I got to say you're doing some fantastic work. My man, I appreciate that, brother. Thank you so much. And this brother is not a tether. He's from the Dominican Republic, and he's not a tether. This is what we're talking about. We, When you come over here and you ride with us and you're a reinforcement and you want to be an ally, that we, we all good. That's not tether behavior. Tetherism is a behavior. And this is what we're talking about. We want brothers like this. You want to come over and rock with what we got going on. You understand? Um, brother E&J, Mr. E&J. Hey, hey, what's going on with you, Tariq? I'm good, man. How are you, bro? Ain't shit over here sipping this E and J as I do hey, every day. My man. Hell yeah. Um, I just wanted to um, you know, I just wanted to let you know I appreciate the verbal spanking you gave on Myron. Yes. <clears throat> but and, and I wanted to point out one of his points that he said um during the argument, I think like the first five minutes or something, he wanted to bring up the point of you know, oh, when the police pull us over, uh, when they see me and they see or when they see us, they just see niggers because, you know, the white the, the police are white supremacists. But he didn't want to admit to the fact that we're in a global system of white supremacy. So he kind of like contradicted himself right there. Right. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. <clears throat> you can't say we're not in an oppressive system, but you just admitted when they see us, they see niggers. Exactly. Exactly. And then yeah. um, also, I just have a, like a. um an opinion I wanted to, to go over with the family because I'm heavy. I'm heavy in these white spaces. You know what I'm saying? I go in there, I go in the spaces, I give them work. And then every time you, uh, you know, you debunk them with, with facts and truth, you know, you know, they, they go to, oh, you're a nigger, nigger, nigger. So, yeah. I, so as the, as a family, you know, I think we all need to come up with a synonymous, synonymous word for the white people, like um, kid lovers, you know, yeah. some, something like that, you know, something that's really going to hit them where it hurts because um you know like honky and cracker and shit, that they don't give a damn about that shit but i go in these spaces i'll let them you're a kid no, lover. No, they, they call no, no, no. let me tell you what gets them what gets them is white supremacist mm. that's the thing that's why they're so triggered by it because yes, it's sir. the truth and it's not an epithet see that's the thing that gets them when you say hey man you're a suspected white supremacist they get bent out of shape because one it's not an epithet two it's their word that's the thing 
That's why they try to run away from it and try to deny being white. White supremacists, that's their word. They were running around telling us that they were white supremacists. A lot of people forget that. That's not an epithet. These people put laws out here using the word white supremacy. They would put out books talking about how white and supreme they were. This is their talking point. They would walk around with signs during the Jim Crow era talking about white supremacy. We want to maintain white supremacy. Those white feminists in that first wave, Elizabeth Canton and all of these people, they were talking about how they want to maintain white supremacy. Thomas Jefferson talked about white supremacy supremacy. You understand? That's their word. That's the thing that gets them. You see? So what they try to do is play the denial of whiteness game. Well, no, it's not white. It's Jewish. I'm not really white. I'm Hispanic. I'm not really white. I'm a 184th Native American. So they get to scrambling. So white supremacist, great word, because it's a fact. Mike, Brandt. What's up, Mike? Hey, Tyreek. How you doing? I, I've been meaning to get your book. I wanted to read your book, get to know a little bit more about you. But um, just my question for you, man. Do you think this is the problems you're speaking on? Do you think it's more like a, a regional uh, problem across the country? Or do you think it's uh, just a general problem throughout the yeah, world? Well, white supremacy is global. We are under a global system of white supremacy. There's nowhere on the planet that's not under the thumb of white supremacy. White supremacy is a global phenomenon. All right? That makes sense? Yeah, it makes total sense. Yeah, no, I just know because I'm from the Northeast and I feel like it's a little bit less uh, uh, serious in the than, than in other segments. I mean, because I drive down like, to South Carolina. You mean Boston? Massachusetts? Really? The Northeast? Yeah, but you got to understand. No, I get it. But I got to understand <laughs> when I'm driving down uh, 87 in, in into Spartanburg and I see a 50 by 100 uh, Southern flag hanging up, you know, on a two, on a 200 foot flagpole, that turns me the wrong way. That hurts me, you know. Damn, so the Northeast, boy, they banned Boston and the New Hampshire, you know, um, um, Governor LePage, the, the governor, was it New Hampshire? He was talking about, it's only six black people out there in New Hampshire. And he was talking about the problem with drugs is that black people from New York are coming up here raping white women. I mean, that's the, a governor said this stuff, you know? So, yeah. Yeah, I guess Massachusetts. But I, I guess I'm more from New Jersey. So New Jersey is more of like, there's like the melting pot in New York. And we're just uh, all the shit that melted over to the outside. So... All right, All right. Yeah, I don't want to take up too much time. Thanks, Tariq. Thank you. Yeah, I know he didn't say the Northeast. Wasn't too much racism in the Northeast. Man, do y'all hear black basketball players complaining about playing in Boston? How they dreaded playing in Boston because of all the damn racism. Did y'all see the, those interviews? LeBron and all of those cats said the worst place to play was Boston. That racism was vile up there. They said they couldn't even, they had to watch where they ate when they went up there. They couldn't even go eat at certain places because they thought the food was going to be poisoned. It was so damn bad up there. Man, please. <laughs> I know he didn't say the Northeast. They got slavery started in the Northeast. It started up there in New England first, over here. Oh yeah, they see. I, we don't see. They try to regulate all the racism to the South. Oh, that's been a big trick bag. Oh, the South is so racist. Oh, they're not like us liberal Northerners. Oh shit. What did Malcolm X say? Malcolm said everything under Canada is the South. <laughs> everything under the Canadian border is the South. There's nothing but the truth. Melrose, hop on. Then I'm gonna get my good brother Sage in the building. Melrose. Wait, hold on. I didn't get Mel. Let me. Well, let me get Sage, and then I get Melrose. Sage, brother Sage in the building. How's everything, brother Flex? How are you, brother? I'm good, man. How are you, sir? I'm good, brother. And as you know, every time you come, in, I'm from the Northeast too. So let me tell you about the Northeast, since there's no racism up here. <laughs> <laughs> don't laugh, bro. Don't laugh. All right. Um, I don't know if that gentleman visited a place by the uh by the name of Staten Island. You can go down Arden Boulevard in Staten Island. They have Confederate flags waving from trees in um Arden Boulevard in Staten Island. You can go to Sylvester mm. Manor in Long Island. That's a whole plantation mm -hmm. out there. Lay plantation, yep. You take your ass 15 to 30 minutes up north from the Bronx, 
you would run all the way into Confederateville. So I don't know what you're talking about, this Northeast, there's no racism out here. In New York, you call that a melting pot, sir. We live segregated within all five boroughs, sir. There's parts of Brooklyn mm -hmm. that Italians live. There's parts that Caribbeans live. There's parts that foundationals live. There's parts that Asians live. This is not no melting pot. That's the whole um, misinformation that's sent out from New York. We don't live amongst each other, even within our own barrel. So, brother, please, mm -hmm. I, I know you're from, you know, the West Coast. Much love to Kendrick, much love to the West. Um, yes, but don't let them lie on the Northeast. It's just as racist as here as it is everywhere else. I'm going to leave you with this. Malcolm said, if you want to... If you're talking about um, racism stops at the um, at the border, you're talking about maybe the Canadian border and all the way down, brother. Mm -hmm. And with that, I'm going to My man, thank you, Brother Sage. Um, let's get uh, Melrose. Melrose, you ready? Peace, family. Am I coming through loud? Yes, you are. What's going on, Mel? All's well. I want to say um, congratulations to you, Afro Elite, Marcel, um, Black Alpha, Vicky Diller, Riza Islam, Everyone that was part of the rally, everyone that was in mic check, shouts out lovely sister Nikki to God. But I wanted to talk on something that I noticed about the rally. Tamika Mallory, she was part of a um, supposed reparations rally across the street during the same time as ours. And afterwards, she was up on her gram using the terms cash reparations. Mm. So I see that as her. And like the squad, you know, the squad members, Corey Bush and them, Jamal Bowman, a.k.a. Mr. Bojangles. Mm. I see them trying to pivot and begin to use our language. So I say that to say we here in Foundational Black American Grassroots, we have to create the outline and the rules and the regulations for who's going to get a confirmation to receive reparations. Because if we don't create the functionality of what will become the new Freedmen's Bureau. I'm not sure what it's going to be called, but we have to create the functionality of it now. Yeah. Because if we don't, they'll say, here's your reparations, and here's Tamika Mallory and Corey Bush. They're going to lead it. Mm -hmm. So we just have to create all of that stuff now. Real talk. And I wanted to say, um, you know, peace to everybody and have a great summer. Y'all take Thank care. Thank you so much. Very, very good points. Baba, Baba Sla. All right. Uh, hey, Tariq. Um, I just wanted to say I really liked your um, debate with uh, Myron Gaines and Sneeko. Um, just like like you said, like when they lie, you win. And they were lying. They, they were lying out through their teeth. Like they were saying, like what Lyndon B. Johnson was Jewish. Right. And no, yeah. Yeah, just... and, right. yeah. And basically, like, uh, like kind of similar to that. Um, I wanted to know, like, do you know of um, Haz al Din? He did a rally in Dearborn recently. Like he also debates a lot of these people who try to deflect it to uh um jewish people mm. now what's it what's his name haz al -Din. he goes by at infra infra haz on uh twitter and he did a yeah, he said he was he's actually inspired by uh the economic freedom fighters but like he's american obviously and i know you support uh malima yeah yeah so yeah i never heard of this guy so what was yeah, his he's, he's really good yeah what was his rally about um it was basically about like you know freeing America, economic justice, and all that stuff. Okay. And um, I I didn't watch the whole thing. I just heard about it briefly. But from what I've heard, he sounds pretty interesting. Yeah. Okay, all right, I'll look into that. Thank you so much, Ben Sala. No Let's get Rad. Rad in the building. Hey, what's going on, guys? What's up, Rad? How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm good, man. So, what's on your mind? Um. I just had a question for you, Tariq. What is, how do we, how do we tackle, I guess, what does victory look like to you with, with all, all, everything that's going on? What is, what does a W look like to Tariq? It looks like um, true justice for everybody, meaning that um, nobody's mistreated and everybody who needs the most constructive help will get the most constructive help. That means real justice. And victory is replacing the system of white supremacists with a system of justice. Once we have a system of justice, that will be the ultimate win. Now, when you say like white supremacy, are you talking about like only white people or is it like a certain religious sect of white people that are in control? No, there's a, a group of people called white supremacists and there's millions of them who are running the show and they control all areas of activity. 
we have to defer to them in every area of people activity. And they control and dominate it from top to bottom. When people talk about white supremacy, sometimes I think people mistake it for white extremists, like the Richard Spencers or the David Dukes. Those are white extremists. And they, to me, they're not that much of a problem because they come out and say exactly who they are. So we kind of say, we, if we see these guys, we know to kind of avoid them. I, I, I kind of have a respect for a white extremist who lets me know who he is. The problem is most of the white supremacists are not telling us who they are but they control all sectors of society and we feel the effect of white supremacy, but they have plausible deniability. So that's what the problem is. So the white supremacists, they're the judges, the prosecutors, the, the school teachers, the lawyers, the cops who all believe in systematic white supremacy and maintaining that system. That makes sense. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. And, you know, I've looked into this, too, and I've, I've tried to find, like, a common thread, you know, between everybody who's in charge, you know, all of the judges, the governors, all that stuff. Mm -hmm. It's really, like, the the thing that they all have in common is that they're Jewish. Mm -mm, that's not true. You heard that, too? That's not true. Yeah, it is. No, that's not. Everybody it, who owns is Ron, DeSantis, labels, is Ron DeSantis Jewish? He's a suspected white supremacist. He kissed the law in Israel. Is he Jewish, law. though? Is he Jewish, though? If you're not Jewish, you have to bow down to oh. the Jewish order. I mean, it's OK. Pretty... Well, that means that that means that all of you who believe in white supremacy are all on the same page. then. so well, that's a I, distinction without a difference. I, I didn't say I'm a white supremacist. Uh, don't, don't not you. I'm just saying I'm just saying people within your community who believe in white supremacy um, is Kyle Rittenhouse. Jewish? He's throwing up white supremacist hand signs. Is he Jewish? No, but Kyle Rittenhouse is just a kid. I mean, he's not in control of anything. He's can barely Don't control mean, his they appetite. Made, they made out. him a hero. They made him a, a white supremacist hero. Uh -huh. who's, in, who's in charge of the media that puts up Kyle Rittenhouse? Um, very good question. Um, if there's this <laughs> battle between the Anglo white supremacists and the Jewish white supremacists, um, the media, who y'all say are, who, who owns the media? The Jews. Okay. Well, they were lockstep in, in line with Kyle Rittenhouse. They were protecting and promoting him. So what's the difference? What's the difference? Why do you, why do you think that they did that? What's, what's the, because they are on the same page of white supremacy. Are they though? Because a mm -hmm. lot of the Jewish organizations are always talking about white supremacy. So it seems like they're just putting them out there to get everybody riled up. They don't really talk about white supremacy like that. No, they don't. When when these white supremacists go shoot up places, the, the media, they get on code with them. They don't tell you about all of the little sleeper cells that they're connected with. They play the lone wolf game. They say, well, there's, there's a lone, they're a lone wolf. They acted alone. But the white media, if a black person does something, they blame the whole neighborhood. So yeah, yeah they're, they, they're say, on code with they're on code with these white supremacists. When you say the white media, yeah, mm -hmm. they're white, but they're also Jewish, and then they also spread all this, you know, white supremacy is a huge danger and all that stuff. And they don't do they that. They don't that. actually view themselves as white people. Yes, they do. They classify. No, themselves. they don't. They, why do they classify themselves as white? They like to play both sides. Why not? Oh. Why not get the benefits if, of both? And if you're able to play both sides, that means you're white enough. So that's still a problem. See how that works? No. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you're able to play both sides, that means you're white enough. You're benefiting from the privileges and the protections of white supremacy, so that means you're white enough. So it's all white supremacy. We shouldn't. I don't, I'm not going to break them up for no reason. If you're still benefiting from white supremacy, see. Well, they it's, break themselves up. I mean, they say that they're not us. Um, well, no, they classify themselves as white, sir. And you just admitted That's that. That's only to get the benefits, but they all right. got dual passports. All, all of them do. All of them do. Every white supremacist tries to get benefits of white supremacy by um, moving away from their own ethnic background. That's what makes you a white supremacist. You well, see, but that, that's, that's part of that's no part of the, sir. Hold on, that's part. That hold on, that's part of the ritual of white supremacy. When the European immigrants came over here from Greece and from Italy, they said, "Hey, the white supremacists said, hey, if you want to be clicked in with us, leave all that." That Guinea Italian stuff, leave that at the door. No, 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 no. You got to lighten up and tighten up, right? 
When you come over here from Greece, uh uh-uh, leave those gyros and all of that stuff over there. No, 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 no. You got to whiten up and tighten up when you come over here. Leave all that ethnic stuff. Get that accent out of here. The accent is a little too ethnic. Get a little nose. Every Greek person I know is very proud that they're Greek. Uh, You don't even know what a Greek person is today. You don't even know what a Greek person is unless they told you. So my Greek friends don't exist. They're not actually Greek. Well, you're there. You wouldn't know. Well, you wouldn't know unless they told you. you. You don't see them running around with those beards and those thick accents anymore. No, you can usually tell if someone's Greek. Well, not really. Not really. Yeah. Um, they fall under the banner of whiteness. You see? So it's all white supremacy. So we, we're not going to break them up. And also, you can't have two Supremes. You can't have Jewish supremacy and white supremacy. That's an oxymoron. You can't have two Supremes. That's you right. There's only Jewish supremacy. No. Well, where were the signs that said Jews only? Around America, where were the neighborhoods that said Jews only? In Greek, America? they changed they changed their last and first names to hide that fact. Right, that means they were white enough, sir. Because I know the the people like the Levitt brothers who created the modern suburbs. They didn't put Jewish only; they put white only. People can live in these suburbs, so they they were white enough. So that's what it is. So we got to deal with white supremacy, sir. You feel me? Yeah, I don't see any white supremacy, supremacy at all. I, I see Jewish supremacy. Yeah. And denial of white supremacy is a form of white supremacy, sir. Denial of How it. is that a form of enlightenment? Because that helps to maintain it. If there weren't no if, if there wasn't white supremacy, why did so many people in the dominant white society who control society say that they're doing it for white supremacy? All of the white forefathers said white supremacy. Thomas Jefferson said white supremacy. Um, Abraham Lincoln said, if I'm going to assign supremacy, it's going to be assigned to the white race. These are the white forefathers. Sir. Jewish people didn't make them do that. Did How that. can we be a white supremacist nation when we elected Barack Obama as president? I'm confused. Really? Yeah. What power did Barack Obama have? If we're, if we're, all, if like everyone, if this is like all white supremacy, mm-hmm. then why did we elect a black president? Um, because you elected. If it's like overwhelming. It because you elected a powerless token, and the rule was he's never supposed to benefit black people or punish whites, and he didn't do either one. That's why you had no problem with him. He was a powerless token. That's why you were able to elect a black president. And under Obama, you went out here, your people were killing black people left and right. Just to make sure psychologically you understood where the real status quo was in the arms and hands of white supremacy, sir. Do you think the entire country overwhelmingly voted for Barack Obama's first term because they thought he was a useless token? Mm-hmm. They knew okay. that when they put him in office, he's not going to help black people and he's not going to punish any white people on behalf of black people. As so long as he's not going to do that, right, he, didn't, he didn't take no power away from anybody or give black people any power at all. More black people were murdered by police and race soldiers under Obama than the entire Jim Crow era. Have you ever been to Israel, Tariq? I've never been to Israel. If you were invited to go to Israel, would you go? That's a, that's so random. I don't even know. Who would invite me to Israel? I don't know. Your Zionist buddies that help you pay the bills? I don't know. So now here's the, the lies in the projection. Now, I, who are my Zionist buddies? See, this is where y'all fall off the rail. Y'all start lying. Now, who are my Zionist buddies? I don't know who's ever paying you to conflate white supremacy and Jewish supremacy. I, I don't know who that is. But so it, it if, sounds if, like you're, you're you're being very tactful with like conflating the two issues. And so, okay, I, I, so, if so by that much time looking at for, things, you would you would so realize that what means, I'm talking so about. that means you're getting benefits from white supremacy because you're protecting white supremacy. Because you're not attacking the white supremacists, so that means you benefited based on your logic you just threw on me. Can you point out the white supremacy in the federal government? Um, who runs the federal government? The Jewish cabal. White supremacists. There you go. See, you just proved it. So thank you for proving that white supremacy is the problem. That's what I've been saying. So we're on the same page. We're on the same page, and I appreciate you, Rad. Let me get some more people in. Thank, so you, you, stand with- thank you. Thank you. I like when they prove my point for me. All right. He proved my point for me. Thank you so much. All right. Amia, hop on, dear. 
or or guys, hold on, it might be a dude. Hold on, Amia. Okay, hey Tariq, oh. couple also. <laughs> hey dear, and I'm like sometimes dudes be having names, and I don't want to say the wrong thing. Um, hey Amia, how are you? <laughs> hey, how you doing? Um, oh yeah, to the white guy that relegated racism to only the South, and yes, there is a big Confederate flag on um, I-85 in Chesney, South Carolina. That's true, but I am glad that you stated that it's also the North um, mm -hmm. that also, you know, is racist um, and that plays in that anti-Black American hate. So that means that all 50 states are complicit in anti-Black American hate. Yes, um, but, oh yeah, to your, oh, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. I'm saying, yes, they are, dear, go ahead. Mm -hmm. Yep, so, but to your title though, the Manosphere Myth, um, yes, I am finding that these tethers they do gravitate, um, they do gravitate toward the toxic manosphere, aka like the red pill, because this is what they practice in their homeland. Um, they can rape, kill women with impunity. So yes, these red pill tethers is what they are. And I agree, they do need to break you off that bread so you can snatch um, edges for the second time. Yes, but um, before I go, yes, sir, thank you so much for giving us the history with the humor. I think people forget that you are a historian um, and congrats on microphone check, the yeah. rally for a great and shameless plug, please everyone go to marcelfacongress.com slash donate if you have at least $10 to give. A great space per usual. Take care, fam. Thank you so much. Absolutely. My brother Marcel is in here who is so phenomenal at the Rally for Reparations. And y'all got to support our brother. Marcel always brings that heat, always brings the fire. Shout out to that brother. And everybody, <clears throat> everybody at the rally was bringing that heat, man. People are still talking about the rally and how pleased they were and the vibe and the buzz and the energy is still there, which was the whole point. Let's get Think in the building. Think. Assalamu alaikum. Hey, what's going on, brother? How are you? Alhamdulillah. This is the very first time I've talked on your space. I want to give you shout out to Reek and um, I don't know all the names to everyone who I've heard on here. I've heard you a couple of times. I've heard a couple of other black spaces and I'm an older man. Mm -hmm. I was born in 61, okay? So my view, I have a friend, she used to tell her kids, when I tell you to do something, you need to do it because I can see further than you. Mm. And so I respect you young people. I really do. I want you to know that off the bat. Mm -hmm. And I'm not going to say anything negative because even though I'm older, I have a new baby. You know, I have a baby oh, like nine years old. My baby's like nine years old. You know what I mean? Okay. So it's all good. You know what I mean? But I had a second chance to kind of do it right because the first time it wasn't right. You know what I mean? So yeah. Um, God bless me with that. And yeah. um, I just want to say that I'm an American, African American. There you go. And reverted to Islam. Now, People can have different views on that. I was raised Christian, mm -hmm. holiness, Baptist, Protestant. But the Quran, the Bible, and the original Torah, not the Talmud, these books are synonymous. A lot of the information is synonymous. Um, I don't want to do the whole uh, religious thing. That's not what this is about. I'm just trying to give you a background on who I am. So when I say what I'm going to say, you can kind of kind of understand so I kind of got into spaces and kind of got on Twitter really heavy um, when the Palestinian issue happened on October 7th. But I've been in tune with the Middle East and what's been going on in Africa and the Congo and different places all around ever since uh, maybe 30 years ago, maybe 25 or 30 years ago. I'm going to have to land your plane, brother. Okay. I got because you all over the place. I don't know where you're going, brother. So shout out to you. I just had to land your plane. I don't know where you're going, brother. It's about to get, you know, <laughs> it's just kind of getting drawn out. And I'm, I was trying to give you a little leeway to get your footing. But yeah, I don't know where your narrative was going. He was all over the place. He, he's about to do a lifetime story. You, uh, only thing I've learned is you are an older Muslim <laughs> was born in 61 and you got a nine-year-old and I don't I don't know where he was going. This is the 50th anniversary of hip-hop and we still have a lot of discrepancies as far as the origins of hip-hop, a lot of claims, who did what, who was the first this, who was the this and that and such and such. But at the end of the day, we need a definitive story, all right? And that story can only be told by the founders of this culture. Like everything was being driven and influenced by 
young black American culture, like the slang, the style of dress, the initial uh, music that we chose. Look at uh, all the boroughs. You got, you know, money making Manhattan and money earning Mount Vernon and Crooklyn. The Bronx was the boogie down Bronx. We was partying up there. I am Coke LaRock, the first MC of hip hop. First cat to pick the mic up. I introduced rapping to the turntables because when I came with it, nobody in the world was doing it. I'm right after Rudy Ray Moore. They want to come in the mix, they want to say, I was, we started. No, no you didn't, no you didn't, no you didn't. What can be known as hip hop was solely an African American creation. What would you get out of some Jamaican toast? What is that? I've never heard of a rapper use a Jamaican toast or a Jamaican flu as a rhyme. I've never heard of it, and I don't know where that myth came from. My name is Legendary. Kane Trixie from the Bronx, BX from the West Side. I am the first break dancer. And that narrative that hip hop has had three founding fathers, that's been rolling for the last almost 30 years, which isn't true. You don't have just three people who created hip hop. Hip hop was created by a number of different people. I am the grandfather, the godfather of the graffiti culture. I am the first element of hip hop. The roots of hip hop being Jamaican, absolutely false. My name is MC Shah Rock. I am a founding member of the MC slash rap culture. Cassette tapes was the internet of our time. It just traveled around by hand. But I know for a fact that the B-Boy stand started from the gods, the five percenters that would be at the jams back in the days who were acting as security. If they get the real truth of how it all was created, then so many lives would not be able to be in existence.